So when it comes to applying the soft tea tourniquet, again, exact same principles apply. The one thing to note is just getting that buckle off. Okay, we're not trying to rip it, rip it, rip it. What we want to do is we just want to fold it back on itself and then we just want to twist it, twist it out of that, um, that clip, okay? From there, exact same principle. Pressure bar or the base of that material facing uppermost. Slide it underneath that leg. Reach it around. Lock it onto that clip. Grasp that windlass like a lawnmower. Grasp that tail. And then we pull down as tight as possible, okay? Twisting that bar, making sure that you can slide those back or forth depending where they need to go. Lock everything in place. Now we don't have the Velcro to lock that on them. So we just wanna make sure we tuck all of that in place, okay? We don't want someone stepping on that, pulling that tourniquet down, that getting caught on a doorway or hanging off the side of a stretcher when you're carrying your patient, okay? Same principle, if you need to apply a second one as close as possible to that first one, okay? If you can't go above it, just go below it as close as possible, okay? To making sure you're getting enough pressure on those tissues. Again, making sure your patient still isn't bleeding, making sure you can't feel any pulses distal of that injury, okay? Um, same principles apply every time we move our patient, every time we do a reassessment, we come back and we, re we recheck or we reassess those interventions that we've applied to make sure they have not failed and they are still working effectively. Um, once your tourniquets are on, and when the time permits, we're gonna start looking at packing and wrapping that wound, okay? To again, making sure there's clots start to form in that wound so that when they do get to surgery, they can potentially loosen off that tourniquet and start doing what they need to do in that facility.